in the second part to the Surrounded by Idiots book by Thomas Erickson, I'll try to cover ways in which we can adapt our own communication style to match that of the person we're talking to. So in case you're new here and this is the first video you're seeing, I truly recommend that you go back and watch the first video so that you really understand what I am talking about and why we might find it interesting to try and adapt our own behavior to match that of the person we're talking to. To make it a little bit easier for you, I will link it up somewhere here in the cards so that it's easier for you to find it. Merry Christmas, everyone. I am so sorry that this video has very little to do with Christmas, but I personally felt like I could not leave you hanging for too long with the part two to the first video that I made. So, so sorry again, but I warmly welcome you to my channel and to the part two of this video. But just as a quick reminder, I'm Joanna and I make weekly videos about organizing, motivation and lifestyle. If you found this video in any way helpful, please consider subscribing and if you have already, don't forget to hit that like button and comment in the section down below, joining our discussion. Let's start today by covering ways in which we can adapt our own behavior to match that of the person we're talking to. We have to remember, first of all, that being able to adapt our own behavior is only half of the success. You need to remember that you first have to correctly assess which color trait they belong to before you're successfully able to adapt your own behavior to match theirs. And that part is probably going to take you a long time to master. Even Erickson, the author and the expert of the method himself, is admitting that at times it takes him a couple of goes and a couple of meetings before he's correctly able to pinpoint which color category a person he's talking to belongs. But once all of that is done, it only takes a little bit of tweaking of our own behavior pattern before we're able to successfully capture the person's attention. Red people are constantly in a rush. They don't have the time for your chit chat, nor the patience to wait for you to ponder over a problem. If you want to capture a red's attention, be sure to start by mentioning what your problem is before you start giving them any background information that you normally would. Or you might even altogether skip that unless a red requests it from you. Be well prepared with all of your facts and do not divert from your main point even if you believe that what you're trying to say or what you're about to say is somewhat relevant or related. Finish first what you started and if there is any time left ask if you could possibly discuss that and if not you should just write it down for yourself so as not to forget it and approach a red some other time about it. In a business setting, a red person is going to be totally the wrong person to approach and ask about the weather or their personal life. He certainly does not want to be your friend and he does not need your compliments, especially if you don't know him very well. Reds like people who are determined and they know what they're saying, but truly and not just pretending like they do. And those who do not fear taking action. Whenever talking to a red, try to avoid using words that undermine your own opinion. So stop saying things like, it's hard to say, I'm not really sure, I'm not certain, and so on. A red is most likely to raise their voice whenever a heated argument begins. But the worst thing you can do in that situation is to back off or even try to please them. What you need to do in that situation is to firmly stand your ground and not relent. Otherwise, he's going to lose all his trust in you and he will walk right over you, over and over. You need to show a red that you are prepared to work really hard, but don't expect them to praise you for it because this is something that they expect of everyone, including themselves. But be sure that whenever you're working really hard, you are making some kind of progress. Otherwise, a red is going to deem all that effort and time 
and the respect that he gained for you already completely lost and irrelevant. A yellow person functions best when they're in a happy and very comfortable environment. So your goal is to try and make that environment as pleasant for them as possible by making jokes, laughing, smiling, and responding to their jokes in a very favorable way. Yellows also don't have the patience to listen to you. They are very spontaneous people, so whenever you're talking to them, skip all the unnecessary information and get straight to the point. And because they rely so much on their own gut feeling, it doesn't really matter if you have all the facts. All that is important to them is how it really feels. So if you don't want to bore a yellow person, skip all the details and get straight to asking them how they feel about their certain situation or about the problem you're facing. A yellow person is sure to love all the novelties. So whenever you're trying to catch a yellow person's interest, you should try to stress the point of it being new, never tested before, never tried before, that nobody ever heard of it before, they are going to be the first person to try it, and so on. I'm sure you get the point. When it comes to relationships, yellows are complete opposites to reds. For a yellow person to feel like they're comfortable around you, they need to feel like you are friendly towards them, like you guys are friends. So remember to laugh at their jokes, remember to chit chat with them, talk about their experiences and feelings, listening to them and sharing your own experiences as well. Whenever you're being stiff and quiet, not returning their smile is a sure path to making a yellow lose interest in the conversation. Erickson says that yellows are the worst listeners out of all four categories. So whenever you're trying to make a yellow agree to something, be sure to make them say it back to you in their own words or write it down for themselves. Otherwise, it's as good as gone out of their memory. Green people enjoy routines and the known that results from them. They constantly worry about what could go wrong and they all the time replay in their own minds all the different scenarios of things that could potentially go wrong. So by nature, they prefer to stay at home when it's safe and quiet for them as much as possible. A busy and hectic schedule means a lot of stress, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of things that could go wrong for them. But all the fears that they're having, even if they feel very unreal to you, are very much real to a green person. So whenever you're trying to establish a good communication with a green person, don't discredit their fears by disregarding them and saying, that's not true, it's surely not going to happen. Those fears that a green person is facing are very real to them. And as such, you should try to offer your support and just your presence to support them and see them through that situation. A green person truly enjoys quiet and peace and stillness. So whenever you're trying to get a green to be on a better terms with you, you should try and offer them a little bit of nothingness and clearing out their schedule of all the things to allow them to recharge their batteries at home. They also really don't like any surprises and anything that requires a lot of incentive. They are very passive. So whenever there is something that needs to be done and that you want them to participate in some kind of project, be sure to approach them with as much details concerning how the project should be done, who is responsible for what, and what you expect from them precisely. That's quite a lot to take in and handle in order to get a green to do what they're doing best. Ensuring that whatever they promised you to do gets done. But if you're successful in creating that peaceful and still environment, very predictable to a green person, you can be sure that you just gained a friend who is going to work really tirelessly to deliver on whatever promise they made. In the previous video, when we were discussing a green person, we talked about how important it is to them to keep everybody around them 
happy. So whenever there is a conflict situation and people start raising their voices and it gets really unpleasant, this is when a green person really withdraws themselves from the situation and are very, very unhappy. So whenever possible, try to minimize conflicts and try to ensure that the green person understands that you are not really angry or frustrated with them, but more so with the situation that you're facing. A blue person is always prepared for any situation with loads of backup plans in place. They studied all the details and they will expect the same of you too. They don't tolerate slacking or covering up the fact that you are not very well prepared or that you don't know the answer to their question. With a blue person, it's better to admit that you don't know the answer to the question than to try and lie about this. These people, similarly to reds, want to focus on the work and they don't really like to waste their words on unnecessary chit chat. They're not there to be your friends, they're there to do the work and they want to focus just on that. They are also extreme realists. So if you keep coming up with the wildest of visions and dreams, they're not going to be very happy or willing to help. So whatever you're trying to come up with, be sure that it's backed up both with facts, statistics, calculations, and can possibly be achieved. So whatever wild dreams and visions and motivational speeches you have, try to save those for people of another trait. These are not really going to be motivational to a blue person. In a business setting, make sure that your work stands for quality and that you really pay a lot of attention to detail. Otherwise, a blue person is going to consider you a slob and by all means, avoid commenting or trying to rush a blue person who is pondering over some problems or trying to figure something out. Allow him for that time of reflection. This is really important to him. A blue person constantly judges you by your work, not by your presentation skills and not by how friendly you are. So really be sure that your work can defend itself. Whew, I'm sure that's a lot to take in and that it's going to take a little bit of time to be able to correctly assess someone and figure out which color they belong to. Please remember that a person might have qualities of other traits and not just the one, and it might take several goes before you're correctly able to pinpoint which trait they belong to. But I'm sure that with time and practice, you will be better at spotting immediately all those flags that tend to tell us which personality trait we're dealing with. In my first video, I mentioned that, that I had tried one of the tips that Erickson gives in his book, and I used it on a person whose color personality trait I am very certain of. And to this day, I am really, really surprised how effective the tip was and how successful I was in trying to make another person hear me out. From that day onwards, I am frequently reaching for this book to help myself remember all of the tips and practice applying them to other areas of my life, to be able to better communicate with other people and better understand their points of view and why they might be behaving a certain way. I really hope that you will find some use for the information in this video and that if you're interested in finding out any more about this, I will link the book for you in the description so that you can easily find it and perhaps read it for yourselves, find out more, read about more examples to be even better able to figure out who belongs to which category. But please keep in mind that that this can be treated or seen as manipulation. So it would really be a good idea if you thought twice before applying any of these tips and use all of them with caution. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next week and Merry Christmas to you all. <laughs> Bye.